Hello. It turns out this channel now has 500 subscribers, which means there are 500 human beings out there who are willing to watch me babble on about whatever obscure spirit out there uh, they're interested in uh, for extended periods of time. Uh, and that's very flattering, uh, really. So what am I going to do to celebrate? Are we going to drink some... Um, Limited edition Hamdens with with birds on front. No, how about some uh, some obscure scotches? No, nope, not really. Brandies? Nope. Uh, we're gonna drink some Old Monk. Oh, oh, we're on. Messed up the reveal. Uh, which is in character with this channel. Um, Old Monk. Uh, I don't even know the proper name of this. So it says seven years old blended. And then it says very old vatted, and then it says XXX. So it's some combination of those names. Uh, in any case, this is the 40% one. There's also one at 42.8, which is I think is called Supreme, and it comes in an even more reduc ridiculous bottle. Um, but right now we're sticking to the uh, standard Old Monk, which you will notice has this um, obnoxious poor restrictor thing borrowed over from the Ray and Nephew bottle. Um, apparently the most popular rum in India, which is one of the most, uh, uh rummy nations on the planet. This is made by, uh, I can't even read, uh, Mohan McKeon Limited, uh, apparently for export only. And it's awesome. I, I adore this stuff. Um, I haven't bought a bottle in a couple of years, but I do, I do really love it. And it's really hard to explain why, because... It isn't particularly profound. I mean, one second nosing this, you can kind of tell this, this is a little concoct concocted. It's a little fake. But something about it makes me really happy. So I thought I would do a, you know, a quick review. And uh, we'll, we'll see what, what, where we go with it. This is also a, an episode for the, uh, the Gen Z viewers, if there, if there are any out there, you know, um, particularly the, the college kids. Because I know a lot of y'all, I, I do a lot of like, you know, obscure stuff, uh, stuff that's hard to get, even stuff that's, that's a little bit expensive, although I'd like to think everything I do is a little bit value driven. Um, but, you know, I, if, you're, if you're paying the price of a, of a new car uh, or, or taking out a, a price of a new car in loans every year and having to pay, you know, working a part time job on top of that and uh, cutting costs everywhere, Aside, you know, on top of having to deal with your personal brand and all that stuff, and um, you have your limited options in terms of your budgetary capacities for, you know, parties, uh, Old Rum is a good one to look at. Or Old Monk, sorry. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's review this first before I talk about why this is a little bit special to me. Okay, on the nose, very fake, but sort of gloriously fake. Um, Yeah, this is this is sort of riding a line, a very thin line between uh, like a base spirit. I don't, I don't know cocktail terminology, like whatever. It's a base spirit and a liqueur. Um, so you're getting golden molasses, a lot of vanilla, a lot of like vanilla essence. Like you went to Trader Joe's and you bought one of those things. You just dumped a whole lot in. Um, some RC Cola. Um, so sort of off-brand cola and a little bit of an, of a, a, a black licorice thing, like a black Twizzlers, a little aniseed in there. Beyond that, there's some, some banana puree and a little bit of a, like an old tree bark thing. It's not fresh tree bark. This is, this is the old stuff. And it's a little bit ethanol -y. It smells... Like, I would be surprised if there's a whole lot of pot still distill in here or sort of, you know, stuff that comes off, come off uh, the column at low, low proof. This feels like something that came off in the 90s for the most part. And again, the flavors feel like they're very much, uh, you know, added rather than um, coming out of the, the, the uh, off the still or out of the barrel. In fact, I am I am not getting a whole lot of barrel character from this at all, even though it's apparently seven years old. Those were not seven uh, years of very active cask um, 
um, influence on the palate. So, so you, I mean, you smell this and you, you feel like, oh God, this is going to be like a sugary mess. But on the palate, it is surprisingly dry. Um, there's a little sugar in there. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was lightly dosed, but not very dosed. Um, I've had a lot worse, put it that way. Um, uh, the, it, it feels like this is a little bit surprising. Given the flavors, it feels very desserty, but it's actually drier than you think it is. Um, it, it feels like it's it's sweet, but then like, but there's no actual sugar there, like producing the, the sweetness, the cloying character that you sometimes get um, from these kinds of rums. I mean, it's a little thin. It feels very much like a mass produced product that's been kind of thinned out, but um, there's definitely a lot of stuff going on. There's the, uh, kind of not a lot of depth, but you know, the stuff that's there is fun. It kind of follows from the nose. So we're getting molasses, vanilla, Coke, um, a little bit of the black Twizzlers thing again. And it gets interestingly bitter on the back end. Um, it's really, so it's not an entirely pleasant bitter, but bitterness, really, well, let me put it, put it this way. The, this kind of bitterness I would normally consider not great, but somehow it works in this context. Um, I, you know, it's, hold on. Yeah, the finish is interestingly absinthe-like, actually. There's, um, there's the aniseed thing, and there's also a little bit of, of uh, like a wormwood characteristic or like that tree bark characteristic, that sort of cardboardy, um, slightly herbaceous medicinal bitterness. And it's not, it's not bad. It's, it's not, um, it's just kind of odd in this context. I don't, you don't expect to see it. I could actually see Amaro fans getting into this. Um, it's, it's, uh, hold on. Yeah, it's right on the line between it, it it feels like it's undecided between whether it wants to be you know a, a a base or you know more of a flavor component more of a of a bittering agent um uh there are there's some amaros that do that um there are even some gins that do that uh, I, I think particularly of like uh some of the barrel aged gins out there um Which is, um, now it's score-wise, I'm not going to give this a huge score because as a sipper, it, it just doesn't have the depth for that. Um, I would give this a 75 out of 100. Um, if you're looking for something that works better as a sipper in this kind of price range, I would just go for the Appleton sig the um, Signature Blend or whatever they're calling it these days. Yeah, basic level Appleton, that's, that's, that's much more serviceable. But there is a reason to be interested in this. Um, and uh, it has to do with how this works with other things. This is, a, this is not something built to go, kind of go on its own, sort of in a, in a Glencairn glass with the whole, you know, um, accompaniment of, of, of sort of sipping and spirit judging and 100 point scales or whatever. This is built to go with other things. It's part to be, so judging this on its own is a little bit like judging like an Audi eight speed automatic transmission on its own without the context of an engine and like wheels and suspension and all that. It's meant to work with other things. So, and what's great about this stuff is something about it makes it just happy to go in just about any other direction you want to, you want to leave it in. So. For example, if you did want to sit up on this, uh, you might consider doing an old trick, which I, I suggested in other videos, which is just adding a little bit of pot distillate on top of it to kind of lift it up a little bit. So um, uh, I didn't want to use Hamden again because I've been overusing Hamden. Something about this licorice aspect in particular makes me think of something, you know, pot distillate that's a little bit more raw and a little bit more industrial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Fiji uh, 2014, um, 
from uh, uh, the transcontinental rum line. So this is um, South Pacific Distillery. And I'm just going to add literally a splash, like half a cap full to my old mug. And I'm going to swirl it around. But you, I mean, you can experiment with uh, with um, any old pot distillate, you know, funky, heavier pot distillate rum you've got. And it just comes alive. Um, just from those few drops, it's it's it, it the initial the emission the um sorry I can't, I can't talk apparently I'm too excited about having 500 subscribers. Um, the initial impression is that the uh, the Fiji the South Pacific has completely taken over the nose. But that's not you you pay more attention to it and that's not quite what's going on. What's going on is it's almost as if the uh, the old monk has sort of pulled back in those aspects of itself the vanilla the um, the weird fruitiness that, uh, and, and sort of emphasize those parts of itself that work really well with the pot distillate. So it's, you're really smelling, I mean, you're, yes, you're smelling the Fiji, but you're getting the aspects of the, of the, the old monk that work really well with it as well. And with just a cap full of that stuff, oh God. That's actually pretty solid. You have, yeah, a really solid sipping rum. Um, this is pretty good. Much more full-bodied somehow. And the the industrial notes and the from the Fiji and the the licorice absinthe notes, they just play really well together. Um, so this is something to experiment with if you're. Again, if you're on a budget and um, you're trying to stretch a nice bottle of pot still rum, here's how you do it. Just just uh, put a couple of drops in your old monk and sip away. Um, but there's something else you can do, and this is why I think the, uh, the college kid viewers uh, would be interested in this. This makes a terrific number of uh, uh, long drinks. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, make myself a little bit of a long drink, uh, for the purpose of the channel. Here's one I prepared beforehand as the, um, as the saying goes. So what I've got here is I got my old, my, uh, old monk. I've got my, uh, Reed's ginger, ginger beer, not my favorite, but, but I just had to run out to the grocery store real quick for this. And... I have got my wedge of lime. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add uh, about six ounces of my ginger beer. Three. Six. Two ounces of Old Monk. Glug, glug, glug. And give it a squirt of lime. This is what makes it makes it different from a dark and stormy, by the way, aside from the fact that dark and stormy is trademarked by Goslings. Um, the dark and stormy officially does not have any lime juice in it. The lime is a garnish, but I'm actually gonna put some lime juice in there. Uh, I'm just gonna, what the hell, throw the, throw the lime in. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, so the, the official, if you're being a, a nitpicker, the official name for this would be a rum buck. Um, buck being a sort of general name for, uh, you know, uh, ginger-based uh, long drinks. Nobody calls these things a buck. You can call it uh, an old and stormy if you like. Uh, that's what I would do. Anyways, this makes some, this is a terrific party drink. Um, you can make in a minute. Can you do better uh, party drinks than this on a kind of, you know, 30 to $40 budget? If you are in charge of, you know, drinks for a nice summer college party? 
Yeah, and most of those drinks would involve a bottle of Ray and Nephew Overproof. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I can understand being wary of, you know, getting college kids together with a bottle of Overproof rum. That could go badly. And a lot of those better drinks, uh, to some extent, involve some skill in mixing. This does not. This is just, you, you put your rum and your ginger beer together uh, with some lime, and you enjoy it. And that's it. This is an idiot could make this drink. And that's kind of the value. You can, you know, whoever ends up behind the, the cocktail desk that night uh, will be able to make this drink without a problem, definitely. And that's kind of the value in, in Old Monk. It's not, this is not something meant to be sipped. Um, but, and so the 100 point score doesn't really capture its value that well. But good God, does it blend well. Um, so yeah, if you are looking to stretch out your, um, uh, like Gosling's only wishes it could make a, a, a rum buck or a ginger beer based long drink as good as this. Yeah, this is, um, um, you're on the porch in the, in the summer afternoon, you know, just taking a break, kicking back. This is not about sipping. This is about enjoying a nice, refreshing drink. Uh, cool. and that's all I got. Um, 75 out of 100, but, you know, blends well above that score. And uh, I think um, that's its value. So I hope this is fun. Um, go get yourself a bottle of Old Monk. Especially if you're a college kid and you have a budget. Um, this is a great option. And uh, thanks for watching. And cheers.